Welcome to stage three, noun declensions. So just reviewing, in stage two we learned about noun cases. What's a case? It's the way a noun is spelled depending on how it's used in a sentence. And you learn two particular cases, the nominative case, and that's when uh, the noun is the subject or the predicate noun of the sentence, and the accusative case, when the noun is the direct object. Now you probably noticed that nominatives in Latin have different endings, but uh, as you learned last stage, every time you have an accusative noun, it ends in the letter M. So let's take a look at some more nouns that you've already learned. Now I grouped these uh, by their nominatives, just like they appeared as you learned them in the vocab lists. And I want you to just take a second, pause the video, and see if you can come up with any patterns. Well, you probably figured out that all of these nouns in group one here end in the letter A in the nominative. And these in group two end in U.S. And these in group three end in U.M. in the nominative. Whoa. Well, what about these? Like Mater, Canis, Grumio, Clemens, Mercator. What? I guess the only thing that we could say about these is that they really don't have any sort of set pattern in the nominative. Okay, so what are we talking about here? On your grammar sheet, this is where you can start with the definition. We're talking about noun declensions. What is a declension? It's a noun family. More specifically, a declension is a family of nouns where all of the nouns have the same endings. In Latin, there are five declensions, in other words, five noun families in all but we only focus on the first three declensions this year because about 95 percent of all nouns in latin belong to either the first declension the second declension or the third declension there are only a handful in the fourth and fifth declensions and we'll learn those in latin too so let's talk about the first declension then all first declension nouns end in the letter a in the nominative singular and a m in the accusative singular uh, here are some examples like Metella when she's the subject versus Metellam when she's the direct object. Wea versus Weam. Yanua versus Yanuam. So all of those nouns that we grouped here uh, in this first group, these are all first declension nouns since they end in A in the nominative singular. Now I want to introduce something else to you. All nouns in Latin have a gender that is assigned to them. Um, and the three genders are feminine, masculine, and neuter. I don't want you to fret about gender right now. It will become more important as we learn about adjectives and noun adjective agreement. So just write it down for now. And again, I'm probably not really going to press it so much for right now. But just know that almost all first declension nouns happen to be feminine in gender. One way to remember that is just remember Metella is a woman, right? And she's in the first declension. So the second declension is where it gets a tiny bit more complicated. Second declension nouns can end in either US or UM in the nominative singular. So if we look back at our groups here, all of these nouns in group two and in group three belong to the second declension. So what else can we say about the second declension to further differentiate those? Well, it's down here at the bottom and again it deals with gender, but here's one thing you should know is that all second declension nouns end in UM in the accusative singular. So regardless of whether or not they end in US or UM in the nominative singular, they all end in UM in the accusative singular. So look at this, caecilius, caecilium, dominus, dominum, atrium, <gasps> atrium. Dun, dun, dun. So what do you do? Oh my goodness, how could you tell in a Latin sentence if atrium is the subject or the direct object? Well, it's all about context and it's all about where the words are in the sentence. So here's the further differentiation. Second declension nouns that end in US in the nominative are masculine in gender, like caecilius and dominus. And then the second declension nouns that end in UM in the nominative are neuter, as in atrium, cubiculum, tablinum, etc. Think about rooms of the house. So then, what about that strange little, I don't know what to call it, junk pile of nouns 
like Mater and Clemens and Mercator and Leo, well, they belong to the third declension. And third declension nouns do not have any set common ending in the nominative singular. Look here, Leo, Nawis, Mercator, Pater, Canis. But here's the thing, they all end in EM in the accusative singular. So at least we can say that that is a pattern. Leonem, Nawem, Mercatorem, Patrem, Canem. You probably notice something weird. Sometimes third declension nouns be between their uh, nominative form and their accusative form, they sometimes add a letter or two just totally randomly. Um, I don't exactly know why they did that, but just know that uh, sometimes there might be an additional letter or two as in Leonem and also uh, patrem, this R just kind of shows up out of nowhere. So there you have it, the first three declensions. Here's a handy dandy chart to help you out. These numbers up here, of course, are the noun family numbers, the declension numbers, first declension nouns, second, and third. And of course, going across in rows, we have the nominative endings. In other words, how those nouns will end when they're the subject of the sentence and the accusative endings, how they will end when they are the direct object. In the third declension, the strange little symbol here is just my way of saying that there's no set uh, pattern here. There's no one ending for third declension nominative singular, as you saw from all those previous nouns. So, wow, stuff to memorize, but have no fear. I have songs for you. Oh boy. So you're going to learn your first two grammar songs. The first one is for the nominative case, and it goes to the tune of You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. That song has a weird history. You should look it up sometime. But anyway, um, the song goes like this. You are my subject, my only subject. You're nominative, you run the verb. You may be A-U-S or something random. Plural A-E-I or E-S. I went ahead and threw the plurals in there for you, even though we won't learn those formally until stage five. Um, but, you know, the song would just sort of strangely end if we didn't do the plurals as well. So the way these songs go is, in each song, you always get the name of the case, what it does, like subject and running the verb, and then the declension endings in order. First declension, second declension, third declension, singular, followed by first declension, second declension, third declension, plural. That's the set pattern for these songs. So, of course, you know I have one for the accusative case as well, and it goes to the tune of the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round, etc. You all know it. Um, so, same deal. The name of the case, first declension, singular, second declension, singular, third declension, singular endings, and then tells you what the case does right here, direct object. And then, for good measure, I've just thrown in the accusative plurals. We won't formally learn those till stage eight, but here they are, as, os, and es, for first declension, second declension, sorry, and third. So it goes like this, and don't worry, we'll practice these in class a lot. The accusative case goes am, um, em, am, um, um, em, am, um, um, em. The accusative case goes am, um, um, em, is the direct object. The accusative plural goes as, os, es, as, os, es. As, os, es, the accusative plural goes as, os, es, it's the direct object. Okay, so that's it for noun declensions, families of nouns that all have the same endings. I love